You guys ever get tired of having Sam Stout around with all the girls chasing him? Well, it's not too bad having the, you know, I guess the uh, the side action from Sam. No, no, Sam, <laughs> Sam's a playboy in the sport. There's no, no question about that. Does everybody get periphery chicks? Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah, no, Sam, Sam's a man when it comes to that, that but part. But seriously, like, are chicks just, like, falling down all over Sam Stout all the time? I don't know. He's always on his game. That's, that's there's no there's no denying that. Everyone the knows how hard everyone trains in the sport. It's about you know what they do when they come home or in between yeah. fights. You know they're the after parties. The you know the hanging out on the weekend. Like that's that's Jeez, kind you're, of, you're describing yeah. our show. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's, that's all we want to do. Exactly. With our show. People are starting to you know understand how people train in the sport. You know, it's no it's no joke. It's, yeah. every, everyone knows they train seriously. You know, this is a full time job. It's not something you do on the side. But you know, what what does a fighter do? In the, you know, after their fight, yeah. you know, after the in between when they get the party or have fun or hang out, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I think people want to know like who's the, the people that are computer nerds? Who are the people that hang out with their children? Who are yeah, the exactly. people? You know, yeah. I think that's what's interesting. Yeah, and that, sure. there's so many different people like that in the sport, right? There's the guys that are all all they want to do is fight and then you know take time off in between and you know yeah. live the life of a rock star, right? right. Like who? So, who's like that? There was a guy on Inside MMA that was just talking about that recently. Um, He's a heavy, light heavyweight, and he was sitting next to uh, Loyola Machida, and uh, he was offered a fight, and he ended up turning it down because uh, he ended up going on like a four or five fight win streak, and then he just got smashed because he was partying way too hard. Any, you know what I'm talking about? No, I, I didn't see that one. So, uh, I'll remember it just a okay. second. We'll come back to you, but I have yeah. a feeling you won't remember it. Right, right. No, no, so, no. Um, I'm driving. Uh, but uh, and then there's like some guys that are family man. Yeah, exactly. Stuff too, some, right? people, some people do this, you know, to put food on the table. Yeah. And, and you know, and that and that kind of tells you know what. Obviously, for what they're fighting for, but when they're in there, you know, you can tell that by their style. You know, they yeah. just got to never say die, never quit attitude. Yeah. There's lots of fighters like that, not just because they're national born fighter, but you know, they're they're fighting for their living. You know, this is this is it. Uh, not really. Like, I mean, growing up, like. I like I went to university and I got a business degree and everything like that, so that was kind of like my goal. But I was fighting professionally all through all the four years through university, and I knew that I'd always be involved in the sport. But again, the sport wasn't that big, so I never see myself, you know, doing this for a living. You know, I knew it'd be part, like it's always been a part of my life and I'll always be, be be one. But I never think this would be my you know, livelihood. Do you ever just want to punch Chris Hardesky in the face sometimes? He's too nice. He's too <laughs> nice. You know, he's too likable outside, you know. Inspiring, no question about it. That kid, he's, you know, headbutts you every time he's training them, but yeah, no, he's, he's too likable. Yeah, Chris is like a super likable dude. Do you like working with him? Like, oh, he's, like... he's great, you know, like we, we, we do a lot of traveling together too, yeah. so, you know, we, we kept really good friends over the last couple years especially. Um, yeah, I think he's a great guy. Did um, how about Sam? You ever just want to punch Sam? No, again, same thing. You know, with the girls that he brings by, you can't. You can't yeah. You can't be mad at uh, so, what do you think about the the salaries that fighters are getting? Because I haven't seen that evolve to the same degree that the sport has. You know, and and do you think that's just mainly because of the uh, the tight hold that a, a couple uh, promotional companies have got? Yeah, there's no question. Like you know, especially with the UFC, like they have such a monopoly. Where you know, like they're they're offering good money, but like in comparison to what they're making, obviously there's there's no comparison. Well, it's also in comparison. Of like even uh, pro boxers, right? Yeah, like you mean because when you, when you know, look pro at the boxing event, it's yeah. it's like similar kind of money, like for a major major event. Like oh, the last sure. UFC '94, uh, I think they made probably over 60 million bucks, but yet the the payroll was 1.1 million, million, million and a half. Yeah, yeah. Which but is, again, they, they can get away with that, right? Because right. like a UFC guy, like you know a top guy, you know a bottom guy, that you have no say. Like you're gonna, right, 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 even right. a top guy, you say no, I don't want to fight for that kind of money. Where are you gonna go? You know, because the other the other shows aren't aren't bringing in those kind of numbers, and that's why the UFC has them off, and, and they can do that. They can get away with it because, you know, I hate to say it, but like you know, some of the smaller shows that are trying to compete, they're they're not here anymore. Right. You know, the guys that try to pay out, like Affliction's really trying to do it, and you know, I like obviously I'm signed with them, so I definitely want them to survive. But they've been the only real. Yeah, but, they've, but they've been paying some good money. That's what right? I mean. Like they, they're definitely paying more than the they, other guys. Right? Again, there's always threats that they're going to go under. You know, that's what I mean. Like so, right. for a company to try and compete or bring the bring the money that 
the UFC is uh, someone not paying the fighters, it's hard to survive after So that. do you think that's going to happen though? Do you think the money's going to come eventually? Or is it, do you think it's primarily just going to come through sponsorship? I think I think the, the main uh, main thing that's going to change is the mainstream sponsors. Whereas, you know, it's not going to be Tapa to sponsor you. Like, I, I mean, right, they, it's be they, like they, they exactly. Like, Tapa, I mean, like, amazing for fighters. And they've right. been in the game for so many years and they you know, put money in from his pocket. I'm not saying that, but I'm talking like, you know, Coca Cola, Gatorade. Those are the kind of sponsors. Right now, they're sponsoring the events. Right. Like, you know, Bud Light sponsoring the UFC. Right, they're not sponsoring huge. Chuck Liddell. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what's that's it going to take to, to take a, a guy, say, uh, uh, who's mainstream? Who's really, really good, and, and catapult him into, main, into superstar like status. A good manager, like you know, um, a lot of people, you know, over the years have been like myself. Like you know, I was always managed by Sean, who's my trainer. Yep. You know, like I think a lot, a lot of like sports agents and management teams are coming in now. Yeah, George has uh, a manager that thinks big now. Yeah, well, know. George's manager, uh, same our management company. They're the same ones that managed Derek Cheater. You know, yeah. so I mean. Those are, yeah, those are the guys who think big, and yeah. once they see the potential of the sport, which now everyone is, they're going to jump on. Yeah. What do you think about uh, uh, Koscheck taking the... Uh, oh, I, I, I mean, thought it was just a matter of time before Koscheck knocked, knocked him out. Yeah, he know? was totally like... Nice combination, yeah. you know, rear uppercut, left hook, you know, beautiful combination, but, you know, I don't think if they fought fought again it happened. Oh know? yeah, no, I agree. I think probably eight times out of ten yeah. cost checks rolling yeah. over the like guy. He, he and he was it. already, right? Yeah. I mean, and it was seemed like such an awkward uh, punch. Koscheck Koscheck was, was coming looking he was at the leaning. ground when he threw that jab and he leaning, hopped leaning, leaning into it. it or something. Getting, you know, and, and it was and it wasn't like the most beautifully thrown punch yeah. either. Yeah. Well that's the thing, like you know, like anyone coming from a wrestling background, they or a jujitsu background or anything, you know, they, they start hitting pads for a year, you know, or started getting good at sparring, you know. You know, they don't have that years of, you know, kickboxing, just like a, a striker going to wrestling. They don't have right. that years of that striking in a competitive event, of, you know. Right. At a high level. So, they, yeah, they, they get comfortable, you know, being able to spar and beat up on the sparring partners. But being in the ring and throwing combinations and getting used to, you know, just doing it properly, you have to take years to do that. Just like like I said, a striker going to wrestling, it's the same thing. Now, now do you think, though, uh, like Koscheck getting knocked out, I mean, it certainly looked like he was knocked out, but now people are, are bitching and complaining about the fact that they thought it was a bit of an early stoppage. And uh, at, at a minimum, no, it was a flash knockout. I mean, yeah. his head went back, yeah. his arms were kind of frozen in the air for a second. Any time that you, you get a you know big knockdown and your head hits the back of the mat, that's a pretty bad you know drop. You know, right. the flash knockdown, you can go down right away. You're back in it, but his head hit the mat pretty hard, and I don't think it was going to get any better for him. And he, he argued and would argue yeah, well, that you know, you know that that's taken money out of his future and it affects his next his few career, fights, yeah, his career. Sure. Um, but do you think it's more important to, to make sure he's okay? Well, that's it, that, that's the referee's job, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's the referee's call. You can't really complain. Yeah, but have, what do you think? Have you? Well, ever I, I thought it was, I thought it was a proper stop at first. I thought, oh no way! But then when I watched a replay, I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I think I'll just yeah, that's too. how it's, I felt. It's too have bad, you, you know. It's too bad. It sucks, but. You got caught with a punch. Have you ever been stopped where you thought you shouldn't have? Um, have you ever been knocked out? Uh, I hit my head on the mat once. Yeah. Did uh, they like stop it? Slam. Well, I was knocked out. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, you know, like you, you can't really complain too much about the refs or judges. Like I, I've been to a decision where the, you know the judges yeah. have came into play and you complain about that. But right. once the fight's done, you can't. Yeah, you can't I really saw do anything that. about it. Well, I guess have you ever sparred with Gina Carano? Um, a few times uh, down down in Vegas, but not not consistently. What, and when you call, when you say sparring, do you mean like making out? <laughs> no, 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 no. Nobody, nobody's is, been able to crack that barrier. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, I, I shouldn't say that. Is, is she bigger than you? Uh, about the same size. Yeah, she yeah. probably walks at one fifty-five or sixty. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when you sparred, have, have you been on the end of a right hand of hers at all? Or no, I, you know, um, I'm not a big fan of sparring with, yeah. with girls. I, you know, I hate. You know, I hate to say it, but I, you, know, you don't want to. I don't, I don't. Yeah, exactly. So when I spar with, I, I just got to take down. Kind of so what down. you're saying? She kicked your ass. She basically kicked the shit. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You know what? I mean, it's good that you finally admit it. Yeah. On our show and not uh, anybody else's.